In this video, I'm going to discuss liquidity signatures. In other words, looking for where liquidity in the market could lie, uh, looking at equal highs, equal lows, that sort of thing. Uh, I have discussed this topic before, and you can find my previous video on liquidity signatures in my ICT Basics Day Trading 101 playlist. My referral links to multiple uh, prop firms, trading prop firms, as well as American Blue Cash Preferred Credit Cards are in the description box below. Please use my referral links. Okay, guys. In this video, I want to recover the topic of liquidity signatures and looking for where uh, potential stops are or pools of liquidity are located in the market using nothing more than the uh, naked price chart. So. This doesn't have to be a super long video. Uh, we're basically going to cover three liquidity signatures, and that's equal highs, equal lows, equal highs, equal lows, and rejection blocks. Again, that's equal highs, equal lows, and rejection blocks. So liquidity is essentially where there are a lot of orders in the market. Uh, you don't need a you don't need a tool like Bookmap or another another tool similar to Bookmap to know where people place their stop orders. Uh, stop orders, which are triggered as market orders, provide liquidity for the counterparty in the market. And there are always going to be piles of stop losses above recent highs and below recent lows. Again, above recent highs and below recent lows. Those are where resting orders are always lying. They're always there. The most obvious or the most reliable liquidity signatures are going to be in, in the following three order. Number one, equal and relative equal highs. Number two, equal and relatively equal lows. And number three, rejection blocks. Let's first talk about where you can identify equal and relatively equal highs. So whenever you're looking at a price chart, no matter what price uh, time frame you're looking at, there are always going to be a number of highs and lows, but we're going to start with the highs that are in and around the same price area you know that there are a number of orders and market interest one tick and and going on to a few points above uh, prior equal highs and prior relative equal highs okay and the reason for that is is that for example if anyone had gone short in this prior leg down their stop loss would be located above those prior highs all right so to identify equal and relative equal highs, what you're going to do is you're going to look at any given price time, uh, price time frame. So for example, here I'm on the one hour, and we're going to look for where the market has these sort of plateaus. I call them plateaus, um, or a spot where you have a bunch of equal and relative equal highs. And you want to look at that area just above those equal highs um, assuming that there's going to be a lot of market interest or in other words a lot of resting orders sitting above those highs. So the market moves according to ICT only for two reasons. The first reason is to clear in inefficiencies. So for example to roll back over a fair value gap, a regular trading hours gap, a long wick. In other words to make a prior inefficiency efficient. The second uh, reason that the market moves is to run on liquidity, to run where there is a lot of market interest or a lot of resting orders. Relative, above relative equal highs, you can find these, relat uh, these liquidity pools, which you have reason to believe that the market is going to run on. So to identify uh, equal and relatively equal highs, what you want to do very simply is just look on your price chart and where do we have a bunch of highs that have not been run. So for example, if you were sitting down here sometime on Wednesday or Thursday of January and you had noticed, hey, there's a bunch of highs right here around 48.41, you could reasonably anticipate the market to go and run up, up and through those highs. So to identify equal and relatively equal highs, it's very simple. You just want to look at your price chart and look at these prior trends or legs, segments of price action, and where have there been a number of highs or lows, uh, two or more ideally, in the same exact spot. Okay, So those are equal and relative equal highs. You expect that the market is going to come back at some point and run through those or run past them. The second liquidity signature is just the opposite of that and that's equal and relatively equal lows. So for example, if you had seen this 
price point here, where the market had made two prior lows, you could reasonably guess that the market was going to go, go run into this liquidity. It was also a fair value gap, so it was running to make the market efficient again, but you could have noticed the equal lows here right around that 47, 43, three quarters. Um, and this one was at 47, 46 quarters. So you could reasonably guess that the market was going to run on the liquidity located below these lows. In other words, the stop orders. I'm using stop orders as synonymous with liquidity. Finally, the third and, and final liquidity signature that I want to talk about is the ICT rejection block. ICT mentions in his videos that in order for price to run on liquidity, it does not need to necessarily run on the high or the low or run past it. It can merely run to the rejection block and that suffices as a run on liquidity. In other words, the rejection block is another liquidity signature. The rejection block on any given time frame is the last open or the last body of the candle. So it could be the close of a down candle or, or the open of an up candle. But it's the last body of a candle uh, before the market pivoted. Okay, that's a rejection block. So for example, rejection block here, rejection block here, rejection block here, and up here as well. Again, we're only looking at the last candle body as opposed to the candle wick to identify a rejection block. Again, we expect that these rejection blocks uh, over time are going to be run. In other words, the market's going to revisit these rejection blocks more often than not because at the same thing with equal highs and equal lows, uh, the market wants to go where there are a lot of resting orders or pending orders. And those are always going to be found above prior highs, below prior lows, and at rejection blocks. In other words, around the area where price had, had pivoted in the past. Okay, guys, that's pretty much it. That covers uh, liquidity signatures, equal highs and relative equal highs, equal lows and relative equal lows, as well as rejection blocks. Those are three signatures that we expect the market to run against in the future because there's a number of resting or pending orders. So that's what we mean when I talk about a liquidity signature. Guys, I hope that you found this video informative. You can find all of my referral links to prop firms as well as American Express Blue Cash Preferred Credit Card. Get 6% back on groceries, 3% uh, back on gasoline, 1% on all of your purchases, along with all the benefits of American Express credit cards. Get a $75 statement credit bonus by signing up using my referral link. Uh, Apex Trader Funding is running a sale. And I've just added on the Trading Pit GMBH, which is a company out of Europe. It's another prop firm. So do consider signing up for those prop firms using my uh, referral links in the description box below, as well as American Express, Blue Cash Preferred. This has been my video, again covering the topic of liquidity signatures. Bye-bye.